it does make me proud to be in the British Army. It's something that I've always wanted to do from being young. It's a respect for myself, for my country, and my friends, my families. So I love it. It's, it's, it makes me proud, yeah. It does, yeah. I joined it for that reason. It makes me proud. Uh, it makes my family proud. This is always what I've got to be. It just makes me proud to wear the green kit. Yeah. You prepare emotionally just by the general training that you do because in the scenarios that we're doing now it's like you're actually away so it sort of prepares you emotionally that way. Um, you get a lot of preparation uh, to prepare yourself mentally uh, through the army and a lot of training. There's a, a lot of training throughout there, you, you don't feel too bad. Well you get loads of help from the actual regiment itself, a lot of help. Um, and you can go and see, speak to anyone. I've spoke to me family and stuff like that. They're behind me 100 percent. So that's all I need to know, really. It's mainly challenging about being away from home is um, just a day-to-day -day, uh, contact with my wife and uh, not not seeing her really. So I look forward to getting back. When my son Tommy's going to join the for armed forces. Munition action was okay, fine. Um, nothing. He's never going to university. Never going to college and. Better himself, so thought fair play, yeah, decent career, chance to see the world. When my son told me he was going to join the army, I had really mixed feelings. Um, my first instinct was to try and talk him out of it because I didn't think he thought it through. And obviously, the current situation, you think of your son or your daughter going into a situation where potentially they might not return, you think, you know, is this the best career move for them? My initial reaction when he said that he wanted to join the armed forces, I was really pleased because he'd chosen a good career. You get to see the world, have a weekly wage, accommodation, <laughs> somewhere to live, and be physically fit, you know. I think it's a good career. Yeah, it does make you feel proud more so when you go down, like when they came back from Afghanistan, see the pass out praise and get their medals, and um, when he passed out to join, it makes you feel ever so proud. I have tremendous admiration for any young man or young woman that's gone through basic training because that, again, through contact with my son and talking over various things, that is a real test of character, not just of physicality, but of mental stability. I try not to think about your son getting injured or, or even death, really. Uh, keep away from the news. My wife's aware she'll be watching it every hour, every day, or they're out knocking and somebody else has been shot. Um, you just try to forget about that. Well, when he was out in Afghanistan for six months, it was absolute nightmare. Just watching the news coverage on Sky News and the media, the papers, the people getting injured and killed, and, and I just worried every day. Terrible, yeah. I think if you accept that a son or daughter is going into a career like this, as I said, at times of conflict, that you have to recognise that perhaps they won't come back. And the only way I think that you can deal with that, you know, should the time come, is again, take it one step at a time. I uh, noticed a lot of changes in my son, um, personality, um, from when he joined, um, like I say, after passing out, he'd come back, just to clean up, tidy up after himself, respect for others, always polite. He is a little bit withdrawn, he keeps things bottled up to himself. I think if, if you know, anybody who goes into a, a, a situation where they're forced to take lives or to watch others being killed, as a parent you would have to consider what the effects are going to be on that person. Um, my father, my, my children's grandfather, was in the Second World War. Um, he was in the commandos and although he didn't talk about it a great deal, um, I think particularly because I was a daughter not a son, um, we did exchange some information. So. I think I have an understanding that, yes, potentially he could be affected should he have to go to war. Certainly when I, when I came back from, from the Gulf War, it took a long time to get back to the normality of family life with my wife and, and my children. Uh, one of the things that the, the British Army has recognised for an awful long time is once you do come back from a war situation, they tend to break up the regiments. So if there's a possibility of actually moving people around, they do because the bonds that you've actually made in a theatre of war don't work the same when you come back and try and take over a peacetime. Well, I spoke to a friend and he was in the infantry and he said it was 
horrible coming back. I don't know, it's just... I don't know what to... I really couldn't say and, until you you go through it, isn't it? It's just missing them. Not being in touch with them as much. Uh, not knowing what they're all up to, sort of thing. You know, uh, just uh, not having enough contact with them. That's the hardest thing. I think the most emotionally challenging part of the um, my career in the forces was actually when I went to my first regiment as paymaster to find out that all of the troops were actually away on exercise. And I thought I was going to turn up and inherit a, a team of maybe about 100 troops. And actually ended up inheriting a complete regiment of 300 families. I inherited all the wife, wives and all the children in the regiment because the regiment were actually out in Cyprus and we were in Germany. And I think that was the most emotionally challenging to actually deal with a whole those numbers of families in the middle of what was then West Germany, with the, with the head of the household away, they're all away from their home country, and actually dealing with the emotions of children and mothers, actually in in that kind of environment, that was that was a real emotional challenge for me. I think the kids' Christmas times, obviously children's birthdays and wives' um, outings and that, that's probably the main thing that I miss. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, because I've already been once to. Uh, I'm quite prepared for it, and we're also doing this training. It's uh, this is which is helping us a lot, so I'm prepared. Yes. The worry is always there. You'd be a fool not to think about worrying about the situations over there, but you keep in the back of your mind, and like I said, a lot of training comes into help. Yeah. We've I've, I've spoke to a lot a lot of people that have been deployed to Afghanistan, but you're never going to know until you get out there. You can you hear all the stories, but you're never going to know until you get out there yourself. Last year, um, a young lad that I had known since he was about seven years old, he was in the scout troop that my sons were in. Um, I ran a unit of that to which he was a member. And a great guy, had a fantastic career, went into the army, um, went straight over to Afghanistan as a volunteer, and unfortunately lost his life within a very short time of getting there. I felt as if the world had lost somebody that could have made a huge contribution. And my overwhelming feelings were sadness, um, sympathy for his family, and just a great sense of loss that, you know, he was such a great guy, he could have made such a difference in, in so many different areas. I always knew he was going to join the army because he had a place at Sandhurst, so it, it was obvious that that was his chosen career. He was one of those very rare young men who actually, at a very young age, is very mature, um, very confident, and very sweet, very okay. sweet natured. I do remember seeing him for the last time in college because he came in specially to say goodbye to myself and to M. Terry before he went. And I do remember then saying to him, and, and clearly saying to him, and writing to him afterwards saying, for goodness sake, no heroics, keep your head down and come back in one piece because this is a war that has changed in its nature. It's not a conventional war, it's guerrilla warfare, and that is an extremely dangerous situation to be in, regardless of the excellent level of training he would have had before he's gone. My director of faculty came to see myself and M. Terry to tell us that, unfortunately, two days previously, Joe had been killed in action. Um, I can't even begin to explain what that was like. It's disbelief. You can't actually believe that somebody that you've known who's been very young, very vital, very motivated, and, and I, if I'm honest, had actually become a friend rather than an ex-student, um, is not going to be there anymore. <laughs>